I'm a web guy, built one of the first web firms back in 95. I'm also a designer. This is a ceramic cup that I designed that's in the MoMA and 200 other stores. And I'm an environmentalist. I started treehugger.com. <clears throat> My next project, thank, <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's nice. My next project uh, is largely about architecture. And I'm going to walk you through an apartment we developed. And uh, I was happy the New York Times liked it. Um, the problem that I'm, the challenge that I'm uh, focused on currently is as follows. In short, over the last 50, 60 years, we've become America the big. Big cars, big houses, big portions. The average cola used to be eight ounces, now it's 20 ounces, so that's two and a half times as big. So our standard is pretty much tripled. Eerily, at the exact same, or the exact same period, our space has done the same thing. So we've gone from a 1,000 square foot average home size in the 50s to 2,500 now with smaller families. So that's pretty much three times the space. So you'd think with all that space, we'd have plenty of room for all of our stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> Not so much. So most of us have some variation of this. Might be some small, a bunch of boxes that, whose contents we're not entirely sure. Um, so it's crazy. Personal storage is a $22 billion industry. So lots more space, lots more stuff. What else has this brought us? Well, it's brought us a lot of debt, credit card debt, mortgage debt. We're also using four times the amount of energy that we used to. So we have massive environmental footprints. And all of this would make some sense with all this extra space and all this extra stuff, you're happier, but we're not. Happiness levels have basically flatlined over the last 50, 60 years. So this didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I set out uh, to, with the belief that if we applied smart design, technology, and behavior change, that done right, we could create smaller lives where less truly can equal more. The new equation that we're attempting to build is that less stuff and less space, done right, is going to make for a smaller footprint. It's one of the easiest ways to go green. It's going to save you a bunch of money, so it's financially smart. It'll give you, in this simpler life, it'll give you a little more time, a little more ease, a little more peace, maybe a little more happiness. So the first project I'm going to walk you through is uh, my apartment, prototype apartment in Manhattan. Uh, it's a 420 square foot apartment, and the basic idea was we set out to give it the functionality of an apartment two or more times its size. So it has one generous space, this is the main space that transforms. So this is in living room setup, a bunch of friends. The uh, home office is simply a drawer that you pull out and has a keyboard and a mouse and a nice monitor, so stand up or sit down. The bed, two fingers, pulls out uh, over the couch. You notice the shelf uh, stays, all stuff stays on the shelf. Great bed, really solid. Guests in 420 square feet, yes. Moving wall pulls out, revealing a little wood room with bunk beds that fold down. And then for privacy, some curtains pull out, magnet to the end of the wall. I like to entertain, so we have a cool resource furniture Goliath table that pulls out from the under the kitchen counter. It extends, and then out of the closet come leaves and some stacking chairs for sit-down dinner for 10 or 12 in my 400 square foot apartment. So here are some key principles you guys can apply at home. First of all, you need to digitize. Digitization is basically magic. You take physical things and you make them disappear. Books, music, film, TV, even paperwork with a sheet scanner, you can make searchable PDFs. We also need to learn how to edit to get rid of our inter internal uh, pack rat. How many knives do you need? We think you need about three. You want to apply this concept to every part of your life. We also want space efficient things, you want to buy small. We found these great absorbent waffle towels. 
They take up about half the space. That means half the storage. It also means half the laundry. We need things that stack and things that nest. So here's this amazing chair. Two chairs. Pretty cool. Oh, three chairs. Here's a bike that I designed. It's called the Thin Bike. Uh, its handlebars rotate sideways and lock, and its, its pedals fold. So a bike that's like this wide all of a sudden comes this wide, so you can tuck it against the wall or put it in your closet. We also want to buy uh, multifunctional things. We want things to do double or triple duty. Um, so in this, uh, in this case, you don't sleep when you eat. You don't eat when you sleep. So having both those functions in the same place makes sense. So uh, you just pull the bed down, and this uh, dining room table folds automatically underneath. You can even leave your stuff on the table. <laughs> so do these ideas apply to Maui? Absolutely. This isn't only an urban thing. Maui is an incredible place. More people are going to come, are going to want to come here. This place is going to grow. So we need to think about how we want it to grow. Do we want it to be such that every person has their own garage, their own backyard, their own house? Because that's suburbia, and the low density means that it, the uh, housing creeps over and takes over our beautiful landscape, creating a culture of cars, culture of traffic, culture of malls. Or do we want to create a playground for the rich and famous? The West, West Village in New York is like this. It's beautiful, but it's only available to the ultra-rich. We can do better than this, and I'll, I'm going to throw out a few ideas. Imagine an island where you can go days without getting in your car. An island that recognizes its incredible nature and therefore has the smallest footprint in the nation, which it doesn't. An island that is accessible to many, that is affordable. An island that defends its open spaces. What's more Maui than that? So how do we do this? Two main, two main ways. One through density, and one through sharing systems. And uh, luckily, past speakers have basically covered this all for me, so it's easy. Uh, so conceptually, I'm trying to talk about density. If the planet lived at the density of New York, you could fit fit the entire planet in the state of Texas, leaving the entire rest of the planet open spaces. So you can see the power of density. So we need to figure out how we get more people on less land, because if we're going to have growth, that's the way it works. So we need to entertain all sorts of different ideas. These are a little crazier, maybe. These are the tumbleweed homes, 100 to 200 square feet. They even propose uh, setting up developments with them where they have uh, shared gardens and lodges and storage and the like, and they get four to five times the density of a normal development. So it's actually a pretty smart idea. We also want to support ohanas and accessory dwelling units. Great way to get the density up. Even single-family homes, like this one, where they combine three onto one lot. And we're going to need to look at uh, mixed-use, multi-story residential, with restaurants and shops and stuff in the base. These have some cool sliding wood panels. Um, this one has a lot of glass for nice views. This is a neat one where you have your uh, own yard and own view in Copenhagen. We also, you just heard Rachel uh, Botsman talk about collaborative consumption. Sharing systems are absolutely the future and they're really important. So we want Zipcar. We want bike share, we want space sharing like Airbnb, product libraries. These are really smart things for us to pursue. Done right, right, you can make accessibility more compelling than ownership. And in so doing, you're going to save, save some footprint, lower your footprint, you're going to save some money, you're going to save some space. So we want a better Maui. Studies are showing that people are happier walking than driving. People are happier outside than inside. Studies are showing that life is about experiences. It's about connecting with people. It's not about stuff. It's not about shopping. So at Life Edited, we believe that we can create smaller lives 
that are fulfilling, that are compelling, that allow us to live within our means, both financially but also environmentally. That these simpler lives are going to give us a little more time, a little more peace, a little more ease, a little more happiness. We believe that less done right can truly be more. Thank you.